Welcome back everyone, my name is Caleb, I'm the Furniture Cowboy. My wife and I have gone full time furniture flipping here in Austin, Texas, turning random pieces into something truly spectacular. We've got a flip for you today that was almost a flop, so without further ado, let's get right into it. The first thing we're going to do is prep the dowels for the drawer fronts. You guys have probably seen this multiple times in our other videos, but the first thing we do is cut them hamburger style to length on our miter saw. After we've got the right amount of dowels cut, we move right along to the bandsaw. As you can see, we've created a jig to cut these in half on the bandsaw. We actually tried making a new and improved jig, and we wanted to make a whole video on that for you guys, but the new jig that we created doesn't work nearly as well as our old one. So if you guys are interested in creating this look for yourselves, we're actually planning on selling these dowels on our Etsy shop, so be on the lookout for that. After any tear out or rough edges have been sanded off with the orbital sander, we move on to prepping drawers. The first thing we're going to do is remove these old tracks. Next up, we're going to clean everything with our go-to simple green. Once everything is cleared up, we move on to painting the sides and the top of each drawer. In today's video, we're using our favorite neutral color, Coyote by Good Bones Paint. If you guys are interested in using their paint, we've got a link for you down below and be sure to use code COWBOY to save 15% at checkout. As far as I know, this is the highest discount code currently out there for furniture paint, but if you know a bigger one, let me know down below. After doing two coats of paint on the sides and the tops of those drawers, we move right along to attaching those dowels. To do this, we're using Fuse It Max by Liquid Nails. As you can see, we had a bit of a rough start in the beginning. That's my bad. That's because the last time I used this, I didn't properly seal off the tip and it got clogged up. And this time I had to cut the hole way too big, but we fixed it later on. Moving right along, we're prepping the body. To start off, we're going to be removing those tracks just like we did on the drawers. Next up, we're removing that decorative piece on both sides of the bottom. We're trying to create a more modern and sleek look, and by removing those pieces, everything's just going to look much more contemporary. While we were removing it, we also had to remove these two supporting pieces behind it. On one side while I was removing it, one of those front pieces came loose, so we had to go in with some Craig screws to sure everything up. The back corner was also separating, so we hammered that back into place. Next up, we move on to vacuuming the inside and cleaning the entire body. After everything's been cleaned up, we move on to scuff sanding. For this, we like to use 220 grit. After scuff sanding, we wipe everything down with a microfiber cloth. With the whole body being dust free, it's time to prime. After one coat of primer, we filled in any imperfections using wood filler. Once all of that has dried, we use our orbital sander to sand it smooth. This time, we learned from some mistakes that we made in our last video. And before we paint, I'm going to be spot shellacking a couple spots just to prevent any bleed through. Now moving on to painting, we're using that same color you saw on the drawers, Coyote by Good Bones Paint. Right now for us, neutral tones are selling a lot better than whites, at least here in Austin. After that first coat of paint, I actually noticed some drip marks, but those were actually from me applying the shellac on a little too thick, not from the paint. So we sanded that smooth right before doing our second coat of paint. After two coats of paint, we go in with two coats of matte polyurethane by Bear. Mm -hmm. 
Moving on to part four, which is assembling the entire dresser and putting everything back together. This step right here is what made this piece the hardest dresser we've ever worked on. We decided to buy new tracks for this piece because the old tracks were looking a little wonky, but we made the huge mistake of trying to drill the new tracks into the same holes as the old tracks. We also did the same exact thing to each drawer. We found the old hole, squared everything up, and screwed everything in. I really thought I was being slick with it and that this would work. It was our first time doing something like this and we really had no idea what we were doing. So we were just crossing our fingers. As we put the new drawers back into the body, you can tell that everything was looking really, really tight. You can especially tell on that top right drawer where the amount of force I needed to close this thing was ridiculous. I literally had to slam it shut. After getting really worked up over those drawers, we calmed ourselves down a little bit by taking a break to sand down some frayed edges that we noticed on the dowels. Once our blood pressure had lowered, we decided to undo everything that we had just done since the new tracks were way harder to open and close than the old ones. We're still gonna use the new tracks, we just need a better system for lining everything up and screwing it in. One thing we noticed when all those drawers were in was that without handles, the piece was looking a little plain. So we decided to spray paint six of these overhang drawer pulls gold. For this, we did two coats of metallic gold by Rust-Oleum and we followed it up with two coats of Rust-Oleum clear coat. Once those handles are ready, we go ahead and get everything ready to be attached by finding the middle of those drawers, the middle of the handles, and lining everything up. All right, moving back to those tracks, we had to do a lot of experimenting. We started off by trying to use this one by three board, but it only worked on the top and bottom drawers since the middle drawer didn't have a platform in the back for it's a restaurant. Next, we tried this new Craig drawer slide jig, but as you can tell, they extended a little too far out. So in order for us to use it on our project, we decided to cut it a little shorter using our miter saw. Once we shortened those, they worked great for installing the tracks onto the drawers on the inside, but the clamps that we had were not up for the task and it kept causing the Craig jig on the inside to sag downwards. AKA, this piece is not lined up straight, so we have to do this all over again. I was getting really frustrated after uninstalling the tracks for the second time on this piece, so I traded places with my wife and she had a bit more luck <coughs> skill than me. She did a lot of the same sort of experimenting that I was doing, but once she got the measurements right, those drawers were finally sliding super smooth. All except for that top right one. Whether this piece was built incorrectly to begin with or warped over time, we finally figured out what the problem was. The bottom of the drawer was sliding on one side of the spacers of the body. Anyway. We did a little more experimenting and guesswork, moved it up a tiny bit, and finally, the dresser is fully functional and everything is in working order. Unfortunately, in the process of getting these drawers all situated, I ended up scuffing some parts of the body of this piece, so we're going in with one more coat of Coyote. Since we had just finally gotten those tracks right, I was not about to mess them up with paint, so I covered them up with some frog tape. After that last coat of Coyote, we followed it up with two more coats of polyurethane. With the body and the drawers all done, it was time to move it over to our staging area to get everything put back together and staged. Guys, please don't make the same mistakes that we made in this video. As you guys can see, we're still learning every day and that's fine, that's how it should be. If you guys got value from this video or enjoyed watching, please give it a thumbs up. Comment below what you thought of this project, subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell so you can be tuned in for more furniture flips or fails, whatever they may be, and we hope to see you guys in our next video. P.S. Our next video is going to be a Q&A to celebrate 100,000 followers on Instagram, so be sure to stick around for that one. Peace!